No matter what you do on rangelands, it's important to know your plants. This is Karen Launchbaugh at the University of Idaho. Today we're going to learn a little bit about how to use dichotomous keys. So whether you need to know plants for wildlife habitat or livestock production or fuels management uh, or anything that you'd want to do on rangelands, uh, you've got to know the plants and a good way to learn plants is with a dichotomous key. I'm joined today by my good colleague, Dr. April Hewlett. She's going to give you some little background information and a chance to practice using a dichotomous key. Here's an example of a dichotomous key, the floor of the Pacific Northwest. It's one that we use up at the University of Idaho. There's also different floors for different geographical regions, so check them out. But this is just one example of a dichotomous key. And basically, a dichotomous key is used to identify different organisms. Dichotomous keys allow us to compare, to communicate, to order different organisms and to categorize different organisms so we can identify what things are and so we can understand how we're going to manage that landscape. When I think about a dichotomous key, I always also recommend having a plant identification terminology book or a glossary. These are really important because there's a lot of terms that you probably will be unfamiliar with. I know I'm still unfamiliar with a lot of terms, so I use my glossary a lot when I'm out in the field. And we'll kind of get some examples of those as we go through today's exercise. With dichotomous keys, we often focus on physical structures that we can see, especially in plants. So what is the differences between these two different plants when we're comparing? I like to also have a hand lens with me when I'm out in the field, which is an example of that lower picture. And basically, that's just like a magnifying glass that helps me see different characteristics a little bit better when I'm in the field. So when we say physical structures, this is just like the lecture you had on morphology of different plant characteristics. So we want to look at growth forms. Growth forms meaning grass, grass-like, shrubs, forbs. What is our growth form of the plant? We like to look at lifespan. So is this an annual, a perennial, a biannual? We also look at morphological characteristics, leaves, stems, roots, and flowers. And here are some of the examples that, I, um, that you've learned in this class that you should be familiar with. So on stems, we have rhizomes and stolons, but we also have stems that are related to growth forms, right? We can say, is this stem hollow or jointed? Is it um, a solid stem? Roots we used also in lifespan and growth form. Is this going to be a fibrous root or is this a tap root? Flowers, we have a lot of different inflorescent types. So make sure that you're familiar with these different characteristics that we learned in this class because we'll be using them when we create a dichotomous key. Dichotomous key, or the die in that word, means that it's a question with only two answer choices, typically. Sometimes we have three, but typically it's just two different choices. Here are two examples of how you might see a dichotomous key. So the dichotomous key on the left is the dichotomous key of rangeland grasses, and we'll go through that today a little bit. So basically, you have a question and you have yes or no answers, which will guide you to be able to identify different grasses based on the physical characteristics. So the first one, does the grass have a spike type seed head? Yes, then you're gonna to go to number two. If it's no, then you skip all the way to number five. The one on the um, right is a little bit more complex and it basically starts with monocots or dicots. I like to start with the lowest hanging fruit when I'm doing or creating the key. So this was it. So if it's a monocot, then it's automatically in my group one. If it's a dicot, then it's in a group two. And from there, I start breaking it down further and further until I can identify what the um, plant species are. In this one, it was a practice quiz for um, students. So they had to fill in what plant species met those characteristics. So I want you to practice using the dichotomous key. So you'll find on the website that there's a dichotomous key to rangeland grasses. So pull that up or print it out, and this is going to help us identify different grass species. And we're going to focus on the four grasses that you have for this class. If you're having a hard time looking at these physical characteristics in the slides below, just zoom in, or you can Google the plants, or, um, or you can go out in the field and try to find these plants. But there's, there's a lot of options to see these characteristics. So, so make sure you use them. So here's plant one. So take a minute to look at that dichotomous key for rangeland grasses and see if you can identify what plant one is. OK, 
Here's plant two. So just pause the video and again, go through that key and try to identify plant two. Plant three. Plant four. So how did you do? Hopefully you were able to identify some of the grasses or at least these four grasses using that dichotomous key. The answers are below on what each of those plant numbers are the species that were associated with each of those plant numbers. So that'll give you just a little bit of a background on how to use dichotomous keys. If you need some of the resources that were um, recommended in this uh, presentation, you can go to the rangelands.principal.wordpress.com website. That's the site that has these types of activities and other information about the Rangeland Principles class here at the University of Idaho.